Hello everyone, just reaching out to launch the Realistic Fiction module for you. I hope you are excited as we are. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us via Slack, text message, email, and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. So we started, what is realistic fiction? We wanted to start with a basic definition. And basically, realistic fiction has a real setting, it has a plot, it has conflict, a situation, and most importantly, it has characters. So this is something that students can identify with, and this is why realistic fiction is so important in the elementary um, school years or in early childhood education, because students are doing a lot of self-discovery. And so these books can really help students understand change. For example, students can read a book on their first day of kindergarten about what it's like to go to school and the transition, and that it's normal to sometimes be scared to go to school on your first day because you don't know what to expect. So a realistic fiction story in that sense would have a real setting, a school, it would have a plot that's believable, which would be going to school and being scared on your first day. It would have conflict, which would be the situation of being nervous and having to leave home. Maybe it's students' first time from leaving home. I mean, it would have characters that the students can identify with. So those characters would look and speak like the students, um, which would make them it easy, even easier for students to identify with these characters. So why is realistic fiction important to teach? Realistic fiction is based on everyday life experiences. These stories can be similar to what students are experiencing. I found this quote, it's by Stephen King. It says, fiction is truth inside of a lie, which is really what realistic fiction is. Reading stories about similar experiences help bring cohesion and acceptance into the classroom while making students feel less alone. Realistic fiction can help students understand that there are challenges and rewards in life, especially if someone is willing to work hard. Most importantly, there's the idea that people are not alone. So teaching realistic fiction just really helps students see different perspectives, but also helps them understand their own identity and helps them um, work through changes, as I mentioned earlier. So these books can even be especially important for adolescents that are going through a big period in time of change and sort of feel a little bit lost at times. Real realistic fiction books can kind of help them understand the process that's considered normal and help them feel that this is something that everyone goes through. Um, so these, these types of books are certainly useful in the classroom. So how can realistic fiction be taught in the classroom? It's most important for students to read, read, and read some more. Um, so have students read in class time, for homework, during free time. Um, but what we talked about as a group is that, above all, it's most important to instill a love for reading in students. Um, it's really terrible when students feel like reading is a chore. So one way that we think that educators can do that is by building an extensive library in the classroom and having access to a ton of books, including those that are realistic fiction. Um, I'll remember that my sixth grade teacher actually read to us aloud at the end of the day while we were waiting for dismissal. And she read all sorts of books, but she always made the characters in the book she always renamed them after students in the class who they resembled, and it was a great way to engage us, but it also really helped us realize that people related to characters, and you can relate characters to other characters in text, so you can make those text-to-text -text connections, and you start to see a bigger picture in the world. Um, so that was really helpful, but it was also really engaging, and it really helped us all develop a love for reading, rather than just find it a chore and have to do those 30 minutes of reading a night. So we talked about some key concepts, and this was actually taken directly from sightwordsgame.com, but we really loved the in-depth definition um, and the characteristics of realistic fiction that it presented. So it's created from the author's imagination, but it uses historical events, so that's the part where it's accurate. Um, and so the setting is accurate, and the setting really could exist, and there's a vivid, accurate description of it. So it's something that students can picture and imagine. It's not some far off mythical land where there's a lot of jargon and different words used. There's a set language used, dialogue, there's clear communication just as we would communicate in society today. Um, so it contains believable stories that uses everyday occurrence. So this is the idea that it's extreme realism. 
um, everyday language is present, which we already touched upon, and there is the dialogue present, which makes it seem like a genuine conversation or experience. The plot contains conflict or tension as well as a resolution. So again, it's helping work through certain situations. The problems could be anything relating to family, self, nature, which are all things that we as humans experience. Um, the solution is believable as a result of the characters, and there's a theme. So it's the author is definitely trying to convey a message to the reader. And so um, students can explore what is that message? What does the author want me to know about what I just read? And lastly, um, but probably one of the most important ones is there's a narrative structure and the elements are presented in a time ordered sequence. So it's not a lapse of 400 years. This is a time period that's believable. Um, it might be a school year. It could be even a month. It depends really what the focus of the story is. It could be childhood, but it's something that's believable and it's through the course of one person's life. So how do you write realistic fiction? This can be difficult for students, so we actually came up with an interesting idea, and it would be interesting to see if it would actually work in a classroom setting, um, but we had the idea that students could actually write an autobiography about their lives, and then with the help of the teacher, they could go back and manipulate the story so that they're taking out the um, personal pronouns such as I or um, my, and they're replacing those with characters, and then at the beginning of this scaffolding stage, they can then de further develop these characters, further develop the plot, and further develop the setting. Um, but basically, they're starting with a true story that really happened to them. And this could help them see that realistic fiction is a real story. And most authors write realistic fiction based on their experiences or things that have happened to them. And they're just changing the information to make it more applicable to a wider audience. Um, but we also just said that it's really important for students to be able to write and have a lot of time to write, um, but not too much time. So again, we suggested maybe 10 minutes of free writing a day. For some students, that would be way too much, though, so it depends on what grade level you're teaching, um, and you, that time would have to be adjusted appropriately. But students would get to free write. You could even give them a prompt, such as write about your favorite memory or develop a character that did X, Y, and Z. Or give them a sentence starter, such as, it was raining outside today, and see where their story goes. They don't all have to be realistic fiction, but more often than not, that's a, something that we gravitate towards because we can understand it better. It's things that we've lived, and so our imagination will go to things that are possible. So then we just put in some Common Core State Standards here, um, which we thought that might be relevant for some of the lessons that you may develop. Um, so I'm just going to skim through them quickly. Um, but identifying words and phrases um, that appeal to the senses. So again, that's important for grade one because it's realistic fiction is based on feelings a lot and that relation to how we feel to how the characters feel. And so there's really that text to personal connection that we'll keep stressing. Um, but also explaining major differences between books that tell stories and books that give information. And so really understanding that realistic fiction is telling a story but it's also saying something about society. It's not giving you factual information, though. Not everyone is going to have that experience. Um, for grade two, we talked about identifying who, what, where, why, and when, and how. Those are extremely important when reading, but even more important when writing a realistic fiction story, because those are the components that make up realistic fiction. And those are um, the components that are found in every genre, but in realistic fiction, those are essential. So for grade three, it would just be basically a text illustration. How does that contribute to what is being said about the realistic fiction piece? Um, and does text convey something different than an illustration would? And what do students make of that? Grade four, the standard is really comparing um, the first and third person narrations. Realistic fiction can be written in first and third person but what do the different narrations say about the pieces and how are they different and what meanings are taken from each piece when they're in different perspectives. So grade five, again, is just explaining series, chapters, and an overall structure or cohesion of a story um, and also understanding how a narrator speaks and their point of view is influenced by events. So again, that's just the connections going back to how 
we need to look at realistic fiction stories. Lastly, in sixth grade, it's determining a theme or central idea of a text and how it's conveyed through particular details, especially um, providing a summary of the text distinct from personal opinions or judgments. So again, these things can really happen, but they can't be our opinions or judgments. We have to sort of remove ourselves from realistic fiction when we're writing it, um, because we're not writing an autobiography. We can write things that really happen to us, but we need to um, have fully developed characters in there and have some sort of theme or message um, which can be considered an outcome. So lastly, um, describe for sixth grade a particular story or drama's plot and how it unfolds um, as a series of episodes and characters responding to change as the plot moves towards a resolution, which is extremely important because in realistic fiction, it's a character overcoming something. So we really need to stress that to students. Um, and again, this can lead to that um, idea of identification, which we keep bringing up. So we just have some examples of realistic fiction books. These are the chapter books that we picked out, but these are some really popular classics. So if you're teaching sixth grade, you could read one of these for fun to the class and really just have like a light conversation about the book. Um, and this could even just be something done at dismissal. In fourth grade, students could be reading these books by themselves. In first grade, you might want to, might steer away from these books as some of the topics might not be appropriate, um, but you could certainly find chapter books that would be relevant to read aloud to your class, and you can find books that students can read to themselves, which are um, not chapter books, and that are at their level. So these are just some examples. And then we just have our work cited here. So I hope that you learned a lot in this module, and I hope that you enjoy the readings. Um, so we have the readings and the performance task listed. If you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, Good luck with this module.